Hello and welcome to Haul Around the World presented by Crushing Comics. I'm your host Crisis with a K and I am here in Wellington, New Zealand. And this comic book collection that surrounds me, uh, it didn't originate in New Zealand. It originated in my home in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Of course, books are printed all over the place, sometimes in the United States, sometimes in Canada, sometimes in China, and they're usually distributed from all different places as well. And from those distributors, they go to stores and then from stores to me. And so by the time these books get to New Zealand, whether it's part of my existing collection or something brand new, they have truly been hauled around the world. And I'm here to talk about just one book today that I hauled around the world, and it is this one. Powerback. Omnibus, Volume 1. It actually says Power Pack Classic, which I think Marvel says classic because there's this modern Power Pack bubble continuity that they did in the 2000s and early 2010s that was drawn uh, a lot by Guru, I think. And I've read some of them. They're really cute, really funny, but they're not in main Marvel Universe. They're one of these kind of side kid universes. And they're pretty widely known and widely read. So I think they denote classic to say this is the original Power Pack series from 1984. Now this is not a brand new omnibus. This omnibus was printed in, just give me a moment to turn, I've already opened and stretched this book. I think we've all seen enough people do that, that I don't need to do it on every show. This was printed in 2019 at the end of the year in China, but I did not buy it until almost a year later in 2020, towards the end of 2020. So why did I buy it, right? This was kind of a fear of missing out purchase and kind of a realizing what I was missing out on purchase. On one hand, Marvel started to really wise up and in the course of 2020 realized that the best way to get people to buy a volume one was to just print a dang volume two. I feel like Marvel used to do this thing where they print a volume one and then like, wait, like, is it going to be good enough? Is it going to people aren't enough people going to buy it? But what they discovered, I think, over the past couple of years, especially with the Shang-Chi omnibuses, especially with the Conan omnibuses, is like people will show up and buy your volume one if you tell them that you'll print more. And so there's that. And there's also um, that just there a lot of omnibus are just selling more. There's just more people in the omnibus buying game thanks to other channels on YouTube, thanks to interest during everybody's lockdown. There's just more people interested in buying more omnibuses, which is great. Um, but also, I think at the point that I bought this, there were some whispers that perhaps we would get a volume two. I don't think it was like fully announced or solicited at the time that I picked this up. But the other reason I picked it up, not just that, the other reason I picked it up was because I was actually starting to read some Power Pack. Now I have the Power Pack classics. In fact, they were one of the things that I did not have in the States. And when we moved here and we got up to some parts of our X-Men reading order that I realized were going to hit some Power Pack issues, I was like, oh no, I don't have this at all. Like I never got the Power Pack classic. So I had to order them. And once things are out of print, it becomes really hard to get them in New Zealand because nobody really has them in stock here. And the stuff that you take for granted that you can get for like $2 from an Amazon seller, that Amazon seller does not ship internationally. And so you have to jump through a lot of hoops to get those things in New Zealand. And so I got those three classic collections. So again, did I really need this. The thing is, uh, as I've been reading Power Pack in my X-Men reread with my child, which we're into like the early 200s of X-Men now, Power Pack goes over as a big hit every single time. Not just for her, but for me. There's something really charming about Power Pack. So let me try to like characterize that for you in case you've never read it. Power Pack is these four kids and they're really young. We're not, there's one of them I think starts as a teenager, but we're talking down to like four or five years old who um, happen upon an alien who gives, who they call Whitey, which is so strange. And um, he's a horse. I think they're called Kasumthanimans, Chameleons. And uh, he crash lands on Earth and gives them powers in this very Green Lantern sort of way. And they're just kids. And they don't really know what to do with these powers, but he charges them with protecting his powers and protecting the universe from these snarks, which are the creatures who are hunting them. And the kids take it on. Now they're the kids of like a, a scientist. And so they, you know, they're, they're not just like totally unaware of this wild supernatural, super scientific life, but they certainly aren't a family of kids with superpowers. And the interesting thing about this that I think distinguishes it from a lot of kind of younger teen 
Powers titles is that they continue being a family and they don't disclose it to the parents. So it's almost a little bit more like the Shazam family than something like New Mutants or New Warriors or Teen Titans. And so these kids just continue to be really young kids, but now they get sucked into things with their powers. Not only do they have to kind of have their own like funny kid capers, but they get connected with Cloak and Dagger. They get connected with the X-Men. The youngest girl befriends Wolverine. And, uh, and so they continue to have adventures of that nature as well. And that's the thing that makes this so distinctly interesting to me, is they're young kids, and it's fully in Marvel continuity. They're being affected by things in the Marvel world. They're crossing over with Marvel characters. They're being affected by events like Inferno, like Fall of the Mutants, and they live in that world. So it's a kid's comic from the 80s, but a lot of like very kid, kid, kid oriented comics were not in continuity. You know, they were something like Super Friends or they were something like Spider-Ham. And this is in the Marvel universe, seeing that universe through the eyes of children and all written by Louise Simonson, who I think really has a gift for this kid stuff. To the effect that sometimes on teen stuff she writes it a little too young for me in New Mutants but to me it's perfect here. So this collects Power Pack 1 through 36 which is basically the first half of the series plus uh, two of their appearances in Uncanny X-Men and 195 and 205 and it's funny because X-Men 205 is so violent and so scary I cannot believe they put it in an otherwise ostensibly kids omnibus. Uh, Thor 363 X-Factor Annual 2, which is pretty much a Power Pack team-up and also an Inhumans team-up. It's not very good. I just recently read it. Um, and then Marvel Graphic Novel, Cloak and Dagger slash Power Pack, Shelter from the Storm, which is a little bit more mature. It handles some mature themes that are a little bit more in line with Cloak and Dagger's themes. And then also some materials from Strange Tales 1987, 13, and 14, which was basically a split title between Cloak and Dagger and Doctor Strange at that time. So that's why they say material from, because there was an A story and a B story. Uh, this omnibus, it's a pretty big one. It's pretty hefty. I've already done all the stretching, as I mentioned. It's on some nice omnibus paper. There's a little bit of show, but it's it's a bright white, glossy, creamy paper. Uh, it does this really cute thing. Let me see if I can find one. We're on every full page cover. We do this little cosmic motif at the edge. Super cute. You know, just a little design thing. They didn't have to do that. They could have just put a black square around it. And the other thing is that... um. I think that it's actually restored pretty well. I mean, clearly they've had some of this in the classics, although I want to say this does go past the end of classics. And, you know, these are um, these are not superstar comic books. And I think they did a really nice job. They clearly had original art files because this is not just cleaned up from a scan. Uh, the colors are really great. And the line work, I mean, there's just this really delicate line on this kid's face here that I just think is... Um, really indicative of they actually took time with this. It's got this really beautiful wraparound cover. Uh, it has, I think this is the um, direct market cover because I just liked this illustration better. So that's what's on the front of the wraparound. And then the back has this, I don't know if it's a Sentinel or what, but it's it's grabbing for them. And, uh, and that's there too. And then in terms of extra material, it has a fair amount of um, extra covers sketches it has some magazine stuff it has some comic strips some turnarounds of their early costumes it's got for marvel omnibus it has a fair amount of extra material and uh oh let's show a little bit of this too so here's that cloak and dagger marvel graphic novel marvel graphic novels had a really different kind of color look you can see this in the new mutants graphic novel too where they're just like a little bit more um, painted and not as saturated. I don't know if that's just because of the files that they reproduce from or if that's actually a factor of how they were actually drawn. It also has this very fun bright yellow tail band. Right, so that's really cute. So I'm really excited to have this. Like I don't think I ever really realized the kind of space that Power Pack held in the Marvel Universe before and I haven't read all of these issues but I've read like a solid eight of these 30, what did I say, 34, 36. Eight of these 36 issues. So what's that? That's a number. Eight into 36 is one fourth. No, it's, 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 it's a number. It's part of 36. <laughs> and, uh, and I like them all. So I think I'm going to probably sit down and read this with the kid. That was the big deciding factor. The amount of giggles she does when we're reading Power Pack is like off the charts. And I thought as I sometimes think kids like are a little older than they are. Like she, I know how old she is. Clearly she's my daughter. But I thought she, at her age that some of the stuff would come off a little too young to her because some of the kids are still like 
four and five, and that's like babyish to her in some ways. But no, she finds their adventures absolutely hilarious. The laughter is off the charts. Here's the thing. It does have some adult content. It has the kids betraying their parents repeatedly because they aren't telling them they have superpowers. There's a lot of sneaking out. And there's a lot of like little kid issues, like learning about telling the truth, learning about playing pranks, learning about if they should trust adults. And so I don't think any of it's inappropriate for a kid to read, but it's the kind of thing where like, yeah, you want to guide your kid and reading it. Kids need guidance. Uh, and so I think that if you're somebody who's just going to like hand this to a kid, check in with them sometimes, especially on that X-Men issue, because that is creepy. Uh, but I think if you're looking for something to sit down and read with your kid who's interested in all of your Marvel books and they're like, mom, dad, like, like, let me get into this Marvel universe with you. And you're like, ooh, I don't know what to go for. First of all, a lot of Marvel comics really work for ages five and six and up if you're pulling from the 70s and 80s with just a little bit of editorial guidance from you as a parent. But if you're looking for something that like wholesale works and is in that universe, I, I would actually recommend this. It's really beautiful. It's really pleasant to hold. And I'm excited to get a second one because that will be pretty much all classic power pack. They don't come back and have their own ongoing series again in, uh, in full to Marvel continuity. So that'll be it. You'll have the whole classic power pack. So that, uh, as I mentioned, Zach Ravaroff finally prevailed upon me to buy this. He, of course, famously has read all the Marvel Universe from 1961 to present. And I was consulting with him many times through this project. And I came to really trust if he was like, no, XYZ thing is a hidden gem. Because he had to read, read so many things that were not gems. And he was beating the drum so hard, like, Power Pack is amazing. Power Pack is great. Take another look at Power Pack. And that's when I started to think, maybe we could incorporate more Power Pack issues into our read. And then I fell in love with it too. So this is all your fault, Zach. Uh, tune in for more Halls Around the World. I'm slowly making my way down my giant stack of boxes across the room, some of which I've opened and I've looked at the books already. Clearly some books like this I've already taken out and used a little bit, but uh, I'm really excited to get through all of them and talk about why I've added them to my collection here. So please continue to stay tuned for more Hall Around the World from Crushing Comics. And until I see you again, please be well. <laughs>